Hello there. Oh, hello. <laughs> so we are, well, I am uh, painting a uh, skull from Alien Lab Studio. Oh, and that's, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, piece of scenery. It's isn't a lovely it? piece of scenery. Good for corn players. Good for Necron players. Good for people who like Space Marine stuff as well. They do a load of other stuff that um, is very 40k, and they do a load of stuff that's very uh, sort of like Age of Sigma fantasy. Like, um, it is a solid piece of resin, and uh, you know it could have been done as a giant piece of bone, but I decided to go as a giant piece of stone. That's cool. And. Um, there's a picture of the finished product there. Ooh, secret glimpse. And then, so basically, with this you could take it in any direction, and I wanted to use it as an example to practice doing some realistic looking rock. Um, not necessarily marble, but just generally sort of like casual mountain rock, and um, get some real earthy colors in there, rather than just doing like a solid gray. Um, what you'll see in this video is that basically, um, we added a load of other colours in there, blues, browns, creams, oranges, and um, you can see they're just wet blending it all in, and, uh, and then afterwards we go with the edging, and it's, it's a very nice piece. Um, I think if they did a series of them, then I'd certainly do something like have all of the different types of magic represented as a skull. Yeah, so that, like that, that would be very cool. Death magic and light magic and all of those given their own skull um, and used as part of part of a, a scenery piece. And, and people certainly could do that with this one. But um, yeah, for me that that's certainly a thing. I mean, this is very good for corn players because it's surrounded by loads of other mini skulls. Um, and this is what they hunt for. This cause... is what they hunt for. They need to make a pile of skulls around a massive skull to, to summon the glory of their god. Um, that that big skull probably is the reward after the whole career path of the skull. Yeah, they, they, it's, 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 it's a real icon, isn't it? So uh, it's nice to also have your models walking around it shooting. So um, we start off with some brown, as always. Nice to start with brown. It's a good sort of mid-tone colour and it's sort of dirty at the same time. So, um, you know, when it comes through on the thin layers of paint above it, it just makes, it sort of brings everything together really nicely. Um, do you think you'd like to have a go at doing one of these? Yeah, I think painting a piece of scenery like that, because it's quite a big piece, isn't mm. it? It's a uh, it's really nice break from painting miniatures and also you know, it's it's nice practice of doing that stone. You doing mm. all the practicing the wet blending, pre you know, uh, pretty much, and yeah. you know, getting those grays in, getting those browns in, getting those uh, red browns in. So that's that's a pretty cool piece. Well, I think that I would, if I did this again, I'd keep the skulls as they are, like skull toned colors. I think you know, you could obviously do a lot of them as if they were like oranges, like burnt skulls, damaged by some sort of superheated weapon. I think the, the giant skull itself could have been like it was purple crystal, for example. I think that'd be Ooh, really cool. Oh, yes. And you could do, you know, the eye sockets with like something that actually yeah. held uh, diamonds in yeah. or something like that. You could, you could do a little light at the back of the eye sockets as if to say it's, it's alive in a way, shape or form. There's incredible detail over the whole model. Um, which is really nice, and um, it was just one of those things. Where it was it, it was hard to put down. I, I started painting on it, and it was it was gritty. It was grim dark. Uh, it would have it would have been nice on any sort of battlefield, and um, I just 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 kept throwing dirty, dismal little browns and greys at it, and uh, as you can see, it started to form some really nice colours over the dome of the skull as well as these little ones that I was doing. I was doing it all in stages. It was a it was a look it was a, a relaxing sort of luxury job where, you know, it was nice to do the wet blending when I was doing the wet blending. It was nice to just put it down again for a bit and then start over up and do all the little skulls on it. And before you knew it, it was done. You know, it was mm -hmm. um, it's a very pretty piece. And as you can see from the photos there, it's turned out looking rather realistic as well. So with paints with colors that you've used you don't really have to be very specific no 
what would you advise to people to use? Anything as that they colors? feel um, suits. So, you know, when you're painting on something like this, uh, I was, you can see, you know, my paints go on very thin. You can still see the primer in some places underneath the paints, which show that I'm not really, I'm not caking the paint on. This is loads of thin layers. You know, and if I put a brown on and it's a bit too orangey, I've got time to think, oh, well, I'll add a bit of sort of dark blue to that and I'll wet blend it in. And this is the thing is I'm using the side of the brush here and I'm highlighting and highlighting and I'm, I'm catching all the raised edges a little bit more as I go through. So we started this really dark and now you can see it's starting to start lightening up a little bit and I'm starting to catch the raised areas with a lighter grey. And then which you, is practically a white. Yeah, yeah. So, so you you work on the colors in in stages, and you just highlight so, more and more. Yeah, it starts off as a wet blend, and then it starts becoming a layering process. So we wet blend to get what's what and get a rough idea of how it could look. And if I like the way the wet blend imitates how this could potentially turn out then um, then we proceed with with catching all the layers and the wet blend actually creates this sort of uh almost marble effect quite mm -hmm. natural marble effect because the water works its way around the paints and the 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 whole piece because obviously the the piece is not flat it's got dips and raised points so the water with paint will just work its way around yeah. uh, the, the piece to, to, to sort of create this sort of effect. This would have looked really nice as well in like sandstone colours mm. with loads of moss draped over it. Yeah. I think that would look like an <gasps> old golem sort I've of thing. I've got an idea in the <laughs> eye sockets. <gasps> you could do like a ground like like moss and grass yeah, yeah, growing yeah. ground yeah you could have yeah this, this could have been ground. this could have been something that would have looked really good on an age of sigma board as something that was deeply overgrown oh now i want to do this I like know, well that. it's a thread of i've painted oh, the only one no. we got there um <laughs> i'll have to speak to alien lab yes if you want one um but there's there's so many ways this could have been taken this could have been done as like a fiery sort of lava skull which, which could have been glowing in places. Or even, even like, you know, there's this uh, spell for corn where you, you've we got, got the this blood coming, blood out, of it. Yeah, coming yeah. out of it. You so could do something like this, this that. This could be an alternative to that where this yeah. appears. And there is, you could, you could use uh, sort of Vallejo resin effects to, to pour blood out of the eyes and have it going over those skulls there. You could do also like ice uh, lakes in those ice sockets, yeah. like with yeah. crackle, crackle Yeah, it could, effect, it could have been, could have been, could have been part of a frozen diorama. It would look really nice. It's quite, they're quite, they do quite cheap scenery. It's, 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 it, and they, they usually do promo codes as well. Um, you know, when we when we spoke to them, it was thirty percent off, which was amazing. And we ran that promo code on the stream for quite some time. Um, but yeah, you can see here just all the lovely sort of coppery hues coming through there next to the next to the uh, the yellows, and it's just it was a very nice, fun little project to do, and so much potential, isn't it? Yeah, the the people at Alien Lab were really great, and they they really liked the finished piece as well. Um, I think this is also very good for for death players. Oh for yeah, like the realm of death. If you were in Shaiish, you could do this as a sort of a grim obelisk. Or an objective, or you, you know, Nagash collecting bones and skulls for the Osirak Bone Reapers. Or oh yes, <laughs> come to me, my children. <laughs> so this could have been like um, a, a real sort of obsidian skull, a giant obsidian skull with loads of little skulls around it, and there could be little peels of green magic shooting over it. Um, so here you're sketching a little bit of different uh, I'm catching edges. the edges. I'm catching the edges yeah. with some ivory and just bringing a bit of brightness into some of those dark areas. So and as you can see on the back there, it looks like the chippings, the edges of the rock have been hit. And, the, you know, it's like a fresh crack. There's there's exposed bit of bright rock on all of these edges and, and bits and bobs. And around that is dark rock. So the dark brings out the light. The light brings out the dark. And um, it's just really nice to do. And 
the this edging is is quite important because yeah. you know you can see how very easily and quickly you you've created a uh, three 3d effect yeah. of, of that model uh or that pc piece of scenery it's brought it to life isn't it yeah rather than just seeing flat colors even though they are they were nicely blended you know you can see those oranges those browns and those grays but that edging really brings it all together mm. as this is why piece. it was hard to compress down this video because what would this is a lengthy video where we should have show you you know the step-by-step -step painting how everything was done um, and the other thing with this is that we could have completely sort of chipped off sanded down removed all those little skulls and um, done the giant skull as its own sort of thing where it might have been a creature that had its brain smashed or its skull smashed yeah and um a giant skull we could have created loads of bit fleshy bits around it with mm -hmm. some green stuff and yeah it would have it would have been a gargant skull or a giant and um there could have been bits of brain coming out the back of it because because yeah. it because it's got a flat back on it you can literally just green stuff straight onto it yes and uh do it as if some some things are coming out of it, it would have done good then for nurgle there's mm -hmm. a bit of nurgle scenery as well could have had could have um had some fungi growing off it for some loon clan yes because uh, there because there is a story about loon clan that live inside the skull of a giant oh is there was there is yeah and and they, the they, they, basically the giant is kept living by the the fungal power of the shamans so he's it's just his head his head is all that's left oh, and they okay. live they live inside of his head <gasps> and um yeah i can't i won't spoil the story but there's it is a thing so i mean i mean this is also quite good for like god beasts and such mm -hmm. you know in the age of sigma there's you know lots of big bones and god dead god beasts everywhere and this is the sort of thing where it possibly an army took down a giant gargant because this is this skull is much bigger than the the mega gargant skulls yeah so it could have been that this was the the previous god beast oh, of the, the giants the, yeah, could, the yeah, father yeah. of the giants or it could have been one that grew bigger as all the giants are growing bigger but it's it's a you know it's nice to just you know, it's it's an easy piece where you can just slap down a load of colours and just go around highlighting and highlighting and highlighting and before you know it all starts to come together, it all looks very grim. Yeah, for those people who uh, seek any uh, piece to practice how to paint skulls, this is perfect. It is it? a giant skull. It's literally a giant skull. So if if you ever there thinking, you know what, I'd like to paint skulls better. Get a few of these and start putting some darkness on them, and uh, before you know it, you'll have, you know, good. You'll know where to put your shade around the eyes and inside yeah. the eye sockets, and um, this little attention to detail on the top of the head, on the the nicks and dents on the dome, and all of that sort of thing really helps. Yes, helps because then you can that. use the side of the brush to just, just you know, catch, it, all. catch yeah. it all, brush it over, and you don't have to be very careful. It, you know, the the more randomness about it, the the better it is actually, isn't mm -hmm. it? If you're doing Very a diorama awesome. like a like a, for a, what's what's it called the battles table. The, 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 oh, I can't remember the game. Got the, me there. The, I can't game, the games workshop diorama that they do. Armies in on parade. Armies on parade. Yeah, if you were doing like a, a diorama for that, and and you had like quite a deep pool. You could put this inside the pool. Or you could put it like in inside a water effect. As yeah, well. something like that. Actually, I don't think you could use it from parade. I don't think Games Workshop allowed non oh, non, no, non no, GW scenery in there. But don't but, do that, guys. But if you're doing a diorama for you, and you wanted to do something like that, where this is under some resin, mm -hmm. and then I think that could look pretty cool. That would be. Or this could cool. be inside of a portal. Yes. You could you could build a portal. And on the other, it could be like a red resin portal. On the, on the other side of the portal, you see this red skull surrounded by loads of other little skulls, like like a gateway into Corn's realm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. That would be pretty cool, yeah. So one thing we didn't talk about really with this was um, getting a good photo reference. Uh, yeah. You look at pictures like mountains, look at pictures like sort of sandstone and granite rock and 
molten rock and all those sorts of things. You know, do a good Google search. That's the main thing to having an idea of where to progress with this sort of piece. And um, especially if you if you're looking for a natural looking stone. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you can also look at uh, sci-fi artworks. This is the part where we were putting the the bleached sort of. Well, it's like you can either use screaming skull or bleach bone or or ivory mixed with zandria dust uh, to make to add the bleaching to the skulls that have been out in the sun. And I really liked that little bit, so I thought yeah, I'd put that in. I, I really like that bit. I like doing that. It is nice, isn't it? Um, Makes the skulls more dirty underneath. Yes. Dirty. So, so as we were saying, uh, photo reference is a key. Have a good photo reference, no matter what it is you're doing. It doesn't have to be for the schools, um, but it does help for schools. And um, you know, uh, also another thing with this was um, the edging on it was a bit sort of um, strange in places. So, what you'll see me do next is I get some AK Interactive texture um, diorama paste. And I put that around the edge. Now you can use any company sort of diorama paste. Um, AK, I've got a bit of a history for dodgy advertising, which is rather distasteful. So uh, you know, we use their products. They do make good products, but um, we don't sort of explicitly advertise them. Uh, so just to make you aware of that. And um, there's there's others you can you can use for that. But um, I think it's 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 quite good here that you see that I I do get the paste and I do can cover the edges and sort of make it all look a bit more um, organic to fit it in with whatever else whatever landscape it's being sat on top of. But this is just it, it is just like sand and pumice. It, it's it's. Um, you could basically put a bit of PVA glue and put add a lot of sand. You could do you... PVA glue and sand if you wanted. It's just hard to. It's it's nice to use a pre mixed paste because. PVA glue tends to drip and mm. sand doesn't really support itself. So like here, you see where I'm getting it neatly level with the bottom of the base. You can't really do that so well with sand and PVA. So that is why you'd want to get a pre-made texture paste. Uh, Games Workshop does a lot of them. They do like Astrogranite and uh, Martian Earth and uh, Sterland Mud. All those sorts of things. You can use any of them. Doesn't matter what colour they are. You just paint over them afterwards to fit it in with the rest yeah. of your product. So, I mean, obviously because this is so white, I, I put black over it. It dries grey because of the the undercoat, the the the, the, the colour of what we're, we're painting over, and um, and then um, I go over it with some brown. This is um, a little clip of the last little catching a few of the little details inside the the eye sockets that uh, you liked yeah a little bit of more edging i think that's interesting to see you know the tasty bits isn't it the little yeah. cherry on the cake the yeah. little little bits of of um texture in the eye sockets which is you know i mean again we could have put dripping algae um stalagmites but we, we do these. like we do like painted uh, effects on, yes. on our models, so that's yeah. that's why we do it this way. And then I uh, went around with a very watery bit of brown, and just uh, popped it round the rocks, popped it over the skulls, and then went over and highlighted round the back of the, the um, over these this this new sort of rock terrain that we because this is all the dried pumice paste. So um, and there is the the final piece. Looks lovely. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful, yeah. It's going to look fantastic on the table, and it will look fantastic on your tables too. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And see you soon. Enjoy. Bye bye.